Well, when you thought it couldn't get any worse, it just keeps happening. More schemes, more scams, and more hacks occurring with the banks, with your personal money. It's scary out there, guys. So uh, let's jump right into this one. First off, I do like this site. This is the Daily Hoddle. Uh, worth, uh, worth a subscribe to. It's free. Just sign up for the newsletter, get the emails. A lot of good information on um, trending stuff with crypto, banks, news, financial. It's, it's not a bad little site. Uh, but like with anything, doubt but verify. Read it, disseminate it, and uh, believe what you want to believe. But it's a good little barometer. Anyway, let's jump into it. So we got 137000 fully drained. $137,000 fully drained from a JP Morgan Chase account in seconds. Now, customers demand to know why bank raised no red flags. Uh, as we read through this, the title is a little, it's true, but there's more to it, right? So I'm a little, I'm open-minded about this. I kind of looked at both sides of the stories, but I want to see what you guys decide. So let's jump into this one. Uh, short and sweet. So we got two JP Morgan Chase customers say the bank's fraud prevention systems are woefully inadequate adequate after 137K was drained uh, from, their, from their account in a matter of seconds. So these people from this state say it all started. This is key right here. Let's follow along like a detective. Start piecing this together and come to your own conclusions. So the uh, couple... Say it all started with a text that appeared to be from Chase asking if the couple had initiated a $4,500 wire transfer, reports the Fox. Sorry, Fox, Fox is reporting it. So this couple got a text on their phone. Hey, did you, did you initiate a $4,500 wire transfer? Okay, so this guy, Scott, he immediately called, which is smart. He called his local Chase branch. That's a plus. Called the number, the official phone number to his branch. They gave him the number to the company's fraud department. Okay, this is where it starts getting weird. So let's see. Right after replying to the text he received with an N, basically saying, no, I did not initiate this wire transfer. He immediately received a phone call from the exact number that Chase had been given him. So here's my thing. Why did he call the Chase Bank branch, get the fraud number, and then he responded to the text, right? That's where I start losing this logic here. So he should not have responded to the text. He should have just, like he did, called the branch and then called him, call proactively the fraud number. So anyway, let's go through this some more. But he did receive the call. Look, he texted back with an N to the text prompt. He immediately received a phone call from that exact number that the Chase branch had just given him. All right, they're calling him. Good scam so far. But the call was from scammers, right? Who somehow knew the, uh, their business accounts, bank number, and they just needed a one-time PIN, OTP code, which you get when they text you and say, here's your OTP, now you can log in, verify it's you. So they just wanted that OTP code from his phone. Here we go. Once he gave it to them, the account was drained. Interesting. So now the company wants to know why Chase is often quick to flag small debit card transaction as suspicious, but turns a blind eye when an entire bank account is empty in a series of, here's the key word, wire transfers to random banks in other countries. I'm telling you, I think the wire transfer is the little secret sauce that banks don't want you to know about. I think a lot of big boys with big money use wire transfer a lot of time. It's probably used by criminal enterprises to do whatever with their money, money laundering. Governments probably use it. Therefore, that's why Chase never flags them. It's all for the big club guys, and we're not in that club. So when the scammers 
get in there. They know this. They know they can do wire transfers and wire transfers will not raise a red flag. So that I think is what's going on. Just put two and two together. Anyway, they're wondering why there weren't any red flags or why the flags didn't go off saying, hey, why are these personal account being fully drained? Uh, yeah, why are we sending all the money from this company to these random banks? Because I think that's why. I think the wiring is what the, uh, the big boys do with the money and they use it to whatever. And uh, for nefarious means, for good means, for bad means, whatever, I don't think the Chase, Chase, JP Morgan guys care to flag that type of stuff. It's just a little dirty secret. And I think the scammers know this. Most, most times the scammers have worked at JP Morgan or at Chase or at these banks. And a lot of it is inside information, I think. And they know this crap. And they go out and they realize they make more money, more money scamming or selling their services to people to, uh, to just perpetuate this fraud. Anyway, let's see. They're saying more crap. You go to Mexico. And Chase knows you don't live in Mexico. And they flag you uh, when you use your card. But, but they can't tell you when you're wiring money to Guam. And that sounds suspicious. See, they're all going, oh, why not? Why not? The, FDI and, uh, the FDIC, they can cover losses up to 250 k but only if there's a bank failure, which most phishing scams, phishing, whatever it's called, don't qualify as since they require authorization from the account, account holder. So the guy answered the phone. They were probably phone spoofing the number from the fraud department. They, you know, man in the middle, whatever. They can call you and they have the fake number pop up, which matches the number was the uh, fraud department's number. And then they asked for his OTP number and he gave it to him. So it's almost like two failures he did there. He it was almost perfect. He did the right thing. He got the text, looked weird, called the uh, branch, got the fraud number, but he responded to the text. Then he picked up the phone when they called him with an address phone spoofing thing. So that was two strikes. He should have got the phone number, which he did, physically, manually, him proactively calling that number and then got the fraud department. He should not have responded to the text. He should not have picked up the phone and, let, and talk to her on the other end. So that was, I think, two strikes. But in the heat of the thing, you don't know, but this is, a, this is a, a cautionary tale to not do this. So it's out there, the scams, the schemes, the fraud, it's happening. So anyway, after weeks of frustrating back and forth with Chase, uh, they told him they were receiving some of the money back, but not all. Uh, it's just a wake up call to start over again and try to accept that all your money is gone. Uh, let's see, Chase receives the following statement on the incident. These types of scams are heartbreaking. Beware of new contacts asking you for codes. But they spoofed the phone number when they called them. But the text, I don't know where the text would come from. Sometimes you don't know. It's just like an eight-digit number, which is a text automated te text address, right? So you don't know if it's an official or not. So that's what you got to watch out for when you're receiving unsolicited texts from people. Just call the number on your bank statement. Call them. Do not respond to anything on your phone. The phone is dangerous out there now. They're getting everybody. They're scamming. The scams are getting really good when they can phone spoof. They can uh, uh, man in the middle attacks, all this stuff. Uh, what else have we got on? Uh, let's see. Chase, other banks, law enforcement, said that technology companies won't ask you to do this. They won't ask you. Scammers will, like cash, wires are final payments and are rarely successfully recalled once sent. It's like crypto. Once you send it, it's gone. You're not going to get it back. So they know this. They know wires are that way. And I think that's why banks don't flag them. They know the big boys use them. They use them for nefarious reasons. They're just the, the good old boy way to get money around without it, you know, maybe not being reported, not being triggered, and they just don't care. And the insiders know this. The fraudsters know it. Yeah, let's see. You never use your codes. The actual advice. You never send anything personal over the phone. If someone's asking you for the other phone, if you want to be polite, like, say, listen, I have to go take a poop. I'll be right back and I'll call you back. And then don't give, call back the official number. You know, if you want to be polite about it, don't keep giving any information out over the phone, social information, uh, PIN numbers, account information. Don't. The scams are really ramping up, man, because it's easier to steal people's money than to go out and get a job and work for it and be taxed to death where your taxes are then being sent over to seas another company people are just going screw it. it's either be a freaking scammer than to, and then it is to work honestly these days and it makes sense sometimes i mean just to see the way things are going but watch this uh my um my take on this is 
He got the scam. He was doing really good. This is the best part. He called his branch, got the number. He should have stopped responding on the phone right then to anything. He should have physically called this department himself. And by replying and then answering the phone, which it was the scammers, he pretty much, it, he nailed it. He, he just messed up right there. So it, is it the bank's fault? They're just kind of PO'd that uh, the bank didn't um, flag everything, every transaction. Are you sure you want to do this? Blah, blah, blah. He authorized it, and that's why the FDIC won't insure it. He was scammed. He was a scam. He was scammed, and I think he's just embarrassed he was scammed. But uh, is it the bank's fault? What do you guys think? I don't know. I think maybe worst case is, um, or best case, I don't know, is uh, any kind of movement of your money, if you authorize it, there's almost a uh, make it a 24-hour cooling off period where you then can't do anything. Nothing's done with that money until another follow-up response is given verbally on the phone to an official number. You know what I mean? I mean, other than that, what are you supposed to do? I mean, you, I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm kind of thinking this guy was scammed. It's, is it the bank's fault? I don't think so. I think he was scammed. And that's, I hate to say it. That's just the way it works. Uh, the only way to stop this is just be uh, armed with the knowledge that it's going on. Anything you receive on your phone, be very doubtful, be very, very cautious. And uh, what I do now, if I get anything suspicious, I'll just call like he did. I'll call the official number on the credit card, on a bank statement or whatever, and I'll get that number. Then I call that number. I'm, this is a good lesson where they can spoof the number and trick you. So anyway, another interesting tale, what's going on with the banks from scams. And then you got the bank accounts just losing money you deposit. On the other end of the spectrum, you put money in the bank account, you get a receipt, and guess what? It's not there. And this happened to one of the, I think it's a Chase or a Wells Fargo, I can't remember, one of the banks uh, at this one branch, two different, three different times, the money's disappeared. My hunch, I think we're still waiting to hear, I think there's an internal guy, someone in that bank, that branch, embezzling or stealing the money. They're giving their receipt out, but they're pocketing whatever the locals put into their account, and they're, it's just, it sounds like it's an internal criminal activity job, and I'm sure the guy's going to get busted. But anyway, you got that type of crap going on. In addition, you also have regional stock prices. The stock value on the regional banks is starting to go down. The Fed Reserve is no longer doing the, I think it was, oh, I forgot. They were giving the banks, regional banks money with the intent that this money be loaned out to customers. But what the regional banks have done, they're greedy, they're greedy, they're greedy, is they took this money from the Fed. The Fed was good intentions, right? Here's some money. Loan it out, help your client base, help your business, write some good loans. The regional banks were taking this money, and instead of doing exactly that, they basically uh, invested the money into very risky, poor investments. Now they're hurting. The, the investments are bad. They lost the money or whatever. They took the money and bought yachts. Who knows, right? And uh, this Fed thing was going on for a couple, couple years now, three years now. They just announced, I think a week ago, they're stopping it because it's actually making the Fed look it's embarrassing him and making them look stupid that they're keep giving these regional banks money and they're just taking it and squandering it away and not using it for the purpose that it was intended. So a lot of stuff going on with banks, man. I don't know what's going to happen. Is there going to be a bank run? People are going to start ripping their money out of the accounts because uh, they don't trust banks and they're just being poorly managed. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what I've been hearing is um, if you have an account like Wells Fargo or Chase and this stuff, you want to get under a bank that is run by BlackRock because they run everything. They own everything, right? Or get in a credit union. Uh, they're less likely to be destroyed by bank rubs or corruption, stuff like this. I don't know. That's just my hunch, not financial advice. But just um, go out and start reading some of these articles and figure out what's going on yourself. To me, it doesn't look good. And you got people being scammed. And like I said, you got on the other side, bank accounts not showing the correct deposits or your bank accounts being frozen because you deposited your uh, IRS tax refund. And they said, oh, where'd this money come from? It's a tax refund. Why are you freeze my account? It's your money, but they treat you like a criminal. All right, that's it. I'm out.